Esophageal Carcinoma Introduction Esophageal carcinoma is a malignancy arising from the esophageal mucosa. There are two major histologic types, squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma. It has a striking geographic distribution spanning from China to parts of Iran, Central Asia, Afghanistan, Siberia, and Mongolia. It exists in the United States where it is more common in individuals of African descent, North European descent, and in males than females, and tends to affect people of lower socioeconomic status. Tends to arise in the cervical and thoracic portion of the esophagus. Risk factors include alcohol intake and cigarette smoking, with these factors acting synergistically to increase risk. The risk factors account for around 90% of SCC in the United States. Adenocarcinoma There has been an increase in the incidence with this histologic phenotype accounting for 75% of all new esophageal carcinomas. More common in males of North European descent with male to female ratio of 6 to 1. It arises within the dysplastic columnar epithelium of the distal esophagus, particularly at the gastroesophageal junction. With gastroesophageal reflux disease and Barrett esophagus being primary risk factors. Epidemiology Sex It is more in males than in females with a ratio of 3 to 1. Peak incidence is at 60 to 70 years of age. Adenocarcinoma is the most common type of esophageal cancer in the United States, which accounts for approximately 60% of cases. Squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type worldwide. Etiology Adenocarcinoma risk factors Gastroesophageal reflux, Barrett's esophagus Obesity, smoking, achalasia Localization, mostly in the lower one-third of the esophagus. Squamous cell carcinoma risk factors include alcohol consumption, smoking, diet low in fruits and vegetables, drinking hot beverages, diverticula, example, Zenker's diverticulum, achalasia, nitrosamines exposure, example, curded meat, fish, bacon, radiotherapy, plumber vincent syndrome, esophageal candidiasis. Localization is mostly in the upper two-thirds of the esophagus. Note that the primary risk factors for squamous cell esophageal cancer are alcohol consumption, smoking, and dietary factors, example, diet low in fruits and vegetables. Clinical features Early stages are often asymptomatic but may present with swallowing difficulties or retrosternal discomfort. Late stages. The common findings in the late stages will be progressive dysphagia from solids to liquids with possible odinophagia. Weight loss. Weight loss may be due to tumor-related cachexia, loss of appetite or regurgitation. Considered significant if weight loss occurs unintentionally and if more than 10% of total body weight is lost in less than 6 months. Retrosternal chest or back pain. Anemia caused by chronic blood loss. Less common features are hematemesis or melena. Hoarseness, infiltration of the recurrent laryngeal nerve may lead to hoarseness. Note that the esophageal cancer is a silent disease and typically becomes symptomatic at advanced stages. Pathophysiology Adenocarcinoma has the histological characteristics that often present with adjacent Barrett mucosa and high-grade dysplasia. Squamous cell carcinoma Histological characteristics are breakdown of uniform tissue structure, squamous cell carcinoma clusters with circular keratinization, lymphocytic infiltration between the carcinoma clusters. 
Diagnostics Esophageal gastroduodenoscopy is the best initial and confirmatory test. Direct visualization of the tumor. Biopsy of any suspicious lesions. Barium swallow previously was the initial diagnostic test of choice, but rarely used since endoscopy has become widely available. Barium findings show an asymmetrical and irregular borders of the esophagus with characteristic stenosis and proximal dilatation, apple core lesion. Staging. Transesophageal endoscopic ultrasound is used to determine the infiltration depth and register regional lymph node disease. Chest and abdominal CT or PET scan is performed to identify the location and content of the lesion and to exclude distant metastasis. Bronchoscopy is used for staging of lesions at or above the carina. Laparoscopy is for staging of lesions at the esophagogastric junction. Treatment Curative Indication is locally invasive disease that has not invaded the surrounding structures. High-grade metaplasia in Barrett syndrome. Methods Endoscopic submucosal resection for removal of superficial epithelial lesions. Subtotal or total esophagectomy with gastric pull-through procedure or colonic interposition. Neoadjuvant chemoradiation for downstaging potentially allows for later resection as definitive treatment in patients with proven complete response. Example during endoscopy. Palliative. Indication is patients with advanced disease, which is majority of the patients. Methods are chemoradiation, stent placement. Stents are used particularly for patients with tracheoesophageal fistula or if chemoradiation is not possible. Other endoscopic treatments, example laser therapy, may be considered if chemoradiation is not possible. Complications include esophageal stenosis, tracheoesophageal fistula, passage of food and fluid into the respiratory tract. Post-operative complications include anastomotic leak or stricture, recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. Note that the esophageal cancer metastasizes early because of the absence of serosa in parts of the esophagus. Prognosis is generally poor because of late diagnosis, only 40% of patients are operable upon first diagnosis. The more distal the tumor, the better the prognosis.